Test question alert. Test question alert. Nope, from the big giant head. I don't fall asleep in this class. I just don't. And it's weird because I can remember falling asleep in every other class. I've never had a teacher like him at all. Like calculus every day, just I pass out. Like he's probably one of the teachers, like probably when I'm 75 years old that I'll still remember. RTs, I fall asleep in there all the time. He's the epitome of what I think a teacher should be. Go ahead, start popping it. How do you know how far this is right You know what? I think uh, oh, that's what I was afraid of. Okay, <laughs> go ahead and uh, go get that tail for me, please. <laughs> Mr. Wright has a key to the city. Yeah. I just tend to fall asleep a lot. I, it's a bad thing, but I do. But this class just keeps me interested, so there's no room for napping because you're learning. It's smoking! It's like this guy is just crazy. He's just exploding with fun. I don't know, you see a huge fireball burn in my hand and go up to the ceiling and all the matter, I'm not gonna have any kids sleeping and every one of those people are out there asking how, 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 how. And as soon as you get the kid asking how or why, I can rope him in and get that intrigue going. Once again, it's a love of learning. He says, I could care less about Newton's third law. I wanna teach you something for you to take outside of school. That's what he's told us before, so. He really, it's, it makes me feel like he really cares about me and I know he does. He's a good man and he will stick, go out of his way for you. Any last words? <laughs> Do you love us? Oh. More than you know. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. Three, two, one. You know, schools have them for six hours a day, and then they the kids go home, and whatever atmosphere they have around for the other 18 affects them. And so, you know, schools can change a lot, but we also have to realize that they go home to a completely different environment. I, I think he could tell with me, like, I, that I had stuff going on. So he, like, kind of reached out to me at first, and at first I was like, dude, like, you're a teacher, like, I'm not going to talk to you, like, but I did. What I went home to when I was young is very different than what some of these kids go home to, where they don't have a mom and dad, or some of these kids, I hear them talk about all the time, where there were gunshots at night. Well, I'd have a hard time sleeping or studying if I knew there were gunshots outside there. I've pretty much been on my own since I was like 15. So, yeah, I mean, I talk to him about a lot of stuff, like at home and stuff, and he works with me. I mean, I've, I've had everything from Mr. Wright, we're pregnant, to I've had an abortion, to I've ran away, and uh, here's where I'm saying, my father is beating me, and here's pictures of the holes in the walls, and you can see where the makeup is trying to cover bruises. I mean, it's, yeah, and it's, it's just very different than, than where some of the rest of us are. That's why one size fits all doesn't work. See mom made something. She said she was gonna make something, but I don't know if she ever did. Hold your hands, Adam. Here you go, Adam. Oh, there go. oh, 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 oh. Yeah, you that. Yeah. Father, son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Oh, oh. Bless us, O oh Lord, with these thy gifts, which you're about to receive from the bounty of oh. Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, son, and Holy Spirit. It's like that one fellow. Abby is perfect in every way. She's a uh, actually 15, not 14, she's 15 going on 25. She's, you know, one of these people that can't stand her dad because he's stupid and a little bit nuts and, and so forth. So I, I, love, I love her to death. When Adam came along though, we didn't think it was going to be a boy. And all of a sudden, a boy pops out and I'm thinking, wow, this is cool. Now I got a girl and a boy and not that I really cared, but you get all the dreams of, wow, I'm gonna be going to football games, I'm gonna be going to baseball games, if they're not any good at sports like I am, we'll be going to you know, plays or something like that, whatever it be, yeah, I'm gonna be there for my little buddy, okay? 
No, now we have to give her our address. Oh. So what is our address in Spanish? Mm. Uno, uno, doso, doso. What the heck? <laughs> no. Is that what that's just? Mr. Tim. Tim. Well, anyway, the nurse comes out and says, this is your boy, and I get ready to hold him. She said, we got to take him back. And I'm thinking, what's going on? She said, he's breathing really, really fast. He was breathing 180 times a minute. It's about three times a second. Still to this day, breathes about 60 times a minute. That's once a second. Think about breathing that fast. <laughs> you get pretty tired after a while, wouldn't you? You get all your homework done? Yeah, yeah. Can you breathe a little better now, Adam? Huh? Does that help? Huh? That help right there? You got a good head of hair. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like music? Loves music. How, how, how do you sign music? <laughs> oh, come on, come on, that wasn't it. That, that was signing time. How do you sign music? Okay, so that's music. Okay. We then found out he was completely blind. Okay. Uh, he was born with something called Jobert syndrome. Only 417 people in the whole world have it. And what it is, is um, it's an auto, uh, autosomal recessive disorder where my wife has to have a gene and I have to have a gene that puts us together and it causes this to happen. So I have a completely intelligent little boy, but he can't control what his body does, even though his body is completely functional. The mere fact that right now your butt's on that chair, your butt tells your brain which way up is. His brain doesn't do that. So the mere fact that you can sit down and sit up is a miracle. Let's go. All right, pal. That's it, keep going. Oh. He is extremely self-abusive. Uh, for instance, uh, if he gets scared or if he gets upset, he'll just start taking his fist and pounding his face as much as possible. If he wakes up and he gets scared and I'm not there, he'll roll out of bed and just start pounding his face on the floor. And stay in bed, please stop. Constantly take his legs and just pound them on his wheelchair until he gets all bruised and bloody. So when I started getting a, a rap on what all this was about, all those dreams, of ever watching a, my son knock a home run over the fence, went away. And talk about getting pissed at God. I was pissed. Because you know the whole thing about where the universe came from? I didn't care. What I care about is why. And you can pick on me all you want, but when you pick on my little boy, that's wrong. A totally innocent little baby and you're making him do that? I started asking myself, what was the point of it? So as we went through all this, it was Abby that sort of taught me why. One day, I went up to her room, and she had Adam in the middle of all of her dolls. And I'm thinking, what are you doing? She's done playing with my little brother. And I'm thinking, he didn't know how to play. And she said, Adam, she said, like, hand me a doll or something, and he just smacked it. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, if he smacked that, he can see. When did you find out he could see? He's like, I don't know, he just started smacking dolls. And I'm thinking, holy mackerel. And so then we started working with him and trying to teach him a little sign language. And there was nothing more incredible than the day you see this. What's that mean? Daddy, I love you. So cool. That's when I knew it didn't care about how things work anymore. It's the reason why things work is because of love. So there's something a lot greater than energy. There's something a lot greater than entropy. It's the fact that what's the greatest thing? Love. That's what makes it all the why we exist. So in that great big universe that we have with all those stars, who cares? Well, somebody cares about you a lot. And as long as we care about each other, that's where we go from here. <laughs>
single handed so I needed you yesterday. You hear me? Yeah. I know, it's hard, it's hard. Man, it's a hard story. You okay? I was worried about you yesterday. Yeah. Juice. I see you play, Juice. You say Juice. You didn't say Juice, you said play, right? Huh? Did you say play? You did? What do you want to play? Huh? What are you gonna play? <laughs> Pull up! Pull up! Use those abs! Use those up! Use those abs! Use those abs! <laughs> Alright, so much for doing therapy, huh? Alright, ready? You gotta have me carry it. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what are you grunting for? I'm going to have to pick up the load. Uh, uh, uh. He pulled the dirty old rag from his pocket and threw it up in the air, and the raven went swooped down and grabbed the rag in his beak. Good boy, Forrest smiled. Now I give it back. No, Chuck, Forrest groaned. You're supposed to return it to me. But he could not get the raven's attention. And total frustration.